Hey, what's up guys? Uh, so in my last video, I talked about how you can control LEDs with constant current using the TLV431. And I kind of hinted at how you could use that same circuit to design electronic dummy loads to test power supply outputs. And it's kind of funny because I made that video while I was redesigning the RGB LED cube. But at the same time, I was also testing a board that had multiple power supplies on it, and each supply needed to be tested at 1 amps or 2 amps. So, you know, instead of designing uh, or, or just tangling together resistors to get the, uh, the 1 or 2 amps I needed, I had the perfect circuit in mind to test each of those outputs. So I used the TLV431, but the problem is, is that that circuit works great to pull like 20 milliamps and things like that for like LEDs. But when you need to pull amps, you really need to step things up by either getting a bigger transistor or start cascading transistors to pass more current. So in this video, I'm gonna take that deep dive into transistor theory and op amp theory, blah, blah, blah. And we'll get all into that later on the whiteboard. Uh, but for now, let's take a look at what I got going on over here. So we've got two really cool circuits here to talk about. Uh, the first one is using just small signal transistors to pull a lot of current. So what we're doing here is cascading transistors so that the total current drawn equals a big number. So we've got here eight 2N3904 small signal transistors here, all pulling about 120 milliamps. Now one thing to note is that they're not in saturation. So what I'm doing here is actually dissipating power dissipating real watts through these transistors. So when you look at the data sheet, you kind of have to figure that out, what that really means. So I'm not, you know, even though these are rated for 200 milliamps, I'm exceeding their power dissipation. I think, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what the number is. But we'll talk more about that at the whiteboard uh, once we get there. So anyway, I just wanted to show you what this circuit here is. And right now I have five volts connected. And you can see it's about 0.97 watt, uh, amps being drawn through this circuit here. And these guys are getting pretty toasty. And it's eight NPN transistors with one NPN uh, booster transistor, which I'll talk about more uh, in a second. And then of course the TLV431. And by the way, one thing I forgot to mention was since this is an analog circuit, you really gotta make sure you've got good solid power rails for the TLV431 to work at. And uh, the best way to at least just help out with that is to make sure you've got some good bypass capacitors in place. So I think I've got like a 10 microfarad capacitor there and it definitely improves the performance of the circuit. So that's the first circuit I wanted to show you. Next is, is driving power transistors. So this guy here is made up of just one single tip 34a and i was able to pull two amps with this guy at 24 volts so you know you're talking about almost 50 watts there being pulled right through this thing so so it's the same kind of circuit as this over here because this needs a little bit more base current and it doesn't have as high of a of a beta a gain from base current to you know emitter collector current so we still need that booster transistor to get that base current so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that how to cascade transistors um, and this little booster transistor so let's go to the whiteboard now okay so just a quick recap uh, this is the TLV 431 circuit to uh, drive constant current uh, through whatever you put here at VCC. Um, so basically the way it works is that you have some resistor here that you set up to give you a current when you have 1.24 volts there. So basically this guy is gonna make sure that it always sees 1.24 volts here. And since you know that's always there, you can set a resistor value here in Ohm's law, 1.24 divided by this R will equal some current here, which gives you the same current here, which is pulled through VCC. And this will make sure that's always there by shorting itself out from cathode to anode to control the base current through this transistor here. 
Now the problem is, is that this guy here can only sink about 15 milliamps through itself. I think you may be able to find variants of this that can sink a little bit more than that. So that gives you a max base current of about 15 milliamps. So with a beta of about, because you know, it's either all the way off and then all the current is going through this guy or it's all the way on and then all the current's going through that. So you wanna make sure that you're covered in both scenarios when this guy's either all the way, all the way uh, shorted itself or all the way opened up. So, I mean, at, with a beta gain of about 100 with this guy, um, so that gives you, well, at 15 milliamps, you may be able to pull off the, uh, what, 1.5 amps you would need there. So you might be able to get 1.5 amps with 15 milliamps, but that's the max of this guy. So with uh, a 1K sitting right here, and you put like five volts here, so that's only five milliamps. So now you only have five milliamps times 100, and that only gives you 500 milliamps out here to pull through. So, and of course, I, I'm assuming, or for this case, that the emitter current is equal to the collector current. So it just helps with uh, kind of visualizing and, and getting an initial design for your circuit. But um, of course, with a higher VCC, the more current. But if you kind of want to make it universal, you don't want to make this like something really low or 50, like that does pull 15 milliamps at five volts because then all of a sudden if you do put 10 volts here or 20 volts here, then you're going to exceed the, uh, the maximum current of this guy and blow it up. So you don't want to do that. Um, and another design note about this guy is that it says that it's max cathode voltage. I think it's like six volts, six or seven volts. And uh, don't, don't get nervous about that because in this circuit, the way it's set up is even though you know, you're putting like say 24 volts here, you're not gonna blow this guy up because that's 24 volts here. But if you kind of work through this circuit here, that's connected to the base here. And we know you're gonna have about a 0.7 volt drop from base to emitter. So your VBE there is about 0.7 volts. And then you know you have 1.24 volts there so let's just assume that you'll then have 1.24 plus the 0.7 you'll have about two volts here so you're safe so don't get nervous about that little speck in the data sheet okay trust me actually that got me when i first looked at it too because i was like oh crap i'm putting 24 volts here and didn't really think about it so uh anyway this circuit's great for that so now you kind of see that if you want to drive heavier currents like if you want to pull five amps through there or what if with power transistors, you don't have 100 beta. You have more, something like 25 as your beta there. Now you, now at five milliamps, you don't boost it up to 500 milliamps. So you've got less of a gain there. So the solution is, So the solution is, is to add an intermediate transistor here that will then, will then drive the base current for the, for the power transistor here. So here you still have your 2N3904, but now there, this, its only job is to draw the base current. So now this guy can do, you know, it can do up to 200 milliamps safely. So Obviously, you wouldn't want to drive it that hard all the way to 200 milliamps, but imagine what 200 milliamps of base current calculates out to this guy times the 25 there. So, so this is a way to get more to get more base current for the power transistor here, and that's exactly what I have set up there on the breadboard, and this actually works beautifully. So the TIP 34A there is a power transistor that can drive tons of current through and this whole circuit works like a charm. So this actually may look familiar to you because it's the same kind of setup as a uh, Darlington Parrot. So this is how to drive a power transistor, but if you don't have a power transistor handy, you may need to cascade the 2N3904 because you know if you're like me, you probably have a thousand of those laying around. So let's take a look at a circuit at how to cascade those.
Okay, so here's the circuit to drive cascaded small signal transistors, or I guess you really could drive cascaded power transistors as well if you really wanted to drive a lot of current. Um, but this is what I have on the breadboard. I'm only showing half of the circuit. I actually have eight 2N3904s cascaded in parallel. And you, so basically what we have here is the same thing I just showed you with a 2N3904 here it, to drive all of the base currents here where the emitter here is connected to the base of every single transistor here. All of the collectors are driven, are all connected together and pulled up to the VCC. And then the emitters are all connected to the a reference resistor here. So remember, you'll still have 1.24 volts here at all of these points. So these currents will all add up to the total current here. So you want to make sure, like if it if it, if you wanted to pull four amps here, you calculate a resistor value each here for one amp. Okay, and then you would total four amps here. And you may notice something kind of weird, and that I have these resistors connected right off the taps here. Okay, and these resistors here bring back the average voltage at each of these points. So it's kind of a cool thing, and, and you may have heard of a passive averager, and that's basically what we have here. And I'm going to show you a little bit more about that in a second. But you have to you have to look back at your op amp theory to, to kind of see what's going on here. But this is this is very low, or sorry, very high impedance input here. So there's like no current going here, right? So your voltage here though is the average of all of these, which is kind of cool because say you have um, little intolerances in each of these resistors, it'll kind of average itself out. That way you'll actually get a closer value of current that you want over there. So that is how to connect these in a cascade, cascade like this. But don't forget to put these resistors in here because if you don't, or and you just say, Say you connected all the emitters together and then you just put one resistor there, you'll get into a thermal runaway condition with these transistors because one of them will just run away from the others and conduct all of the current and then the other guys won't do anything and then you'll end up blowing out the resistors one by one. So, and you don't want that. This will prevent that. This will make sure that each one is doing its own job. Okay, so uh, let me show you this little passive averager thing here for a second. So <clears throat> basically what we have here is this circuit right here, right? This, the inside, the guts of that TLV 431, actually there's a fourth one here, so I'll just get that here, where each one of these is a 1K resistor that was pulled, that was pulled off of there like I showed you. So we have this, this same thing going on here inside the TLV431. So to calculate what the voltage would be right here, we'll call that VO. And I'm just going to do some insanely crazy and ugly algebra here. But if you just assume that the currents here, you add up all of these currents and they sum to zero, right? Because the current here would be equal to zero. So if I went V1, I'm just going to do this as fast as I can. And I'm going to assume all these resistors, well, are equal. And that's what they were in that circuit. They were all 1K. That's what I used. So if you go V1, actually, I'd rather go uh, VO minus V1 over R. Okay, so there it is. That's the average voltage. So it's kind of a cool circuit. A lot of things going on there. And... Uh, so just uh, make sure that when you design this circuit that you're looking at power dissipation of each of your transistors. Make sure you're watching the power dissipation of your res the resistors, the load reference resistors. So you really got to watch that because this is an electronic dummy load. It's, its whole purpose in life is to dissipate watts. So you got to pay attention to all that stuff. And hopefully this video wasn't too boring, but I thought it was just too cool to not uh, talk about a little bit here. So... That is the video. Thanks for watching.